Ukraine caught most of the world by surprise when it invaded Russia on August 6th. Ukrainian armed forces are now in control of around 1,200 square kilometers of Russian territory. That's about 500 square miles, and it accomplishes one of the primary goals of the campaign, creating a buffer zone around Sumy Oblast in northern Ukraine. As a result, the number of Russian attacks from tubed weapons decreased, as well as the number of casualties among civilians. It also created an opportunity to repair the power infrastructure in safer conditions and prepare it for the beginning of the heating season. Alina Bekatova is a democracy fellow with the Center for European Policy Analysis. She and several colleagues recently hosted a panel discussion for the press focusing on the Kursk offensive. They said the recent battlefield gains are noteworthy. After all, Ukraine seized more territory in two weeks than Russia has in eight months. But they all cautioned now is not the time for Ukraine or its allies to celebrate because it's still unclear whether Ukraine is at the beginning of the end of the Kursk campaign or just the end of the beginning. The longer this goes on, the more questions will be there. What to do with the local population, how to organize uh, uh, the continued work of the villages and cities that are now uh, uh, in the Ukrainian uh, uh, military sphere of influence, because the city administrations by and large ran away. Uh, the Russians plundered uh, their own shops. This will last for a few days, but what will come after? Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, and his administration said they do not want to occupy Russia. Rather, they want to put Ukraine in a stronger position to negotiate ahead of any potential peace talks. Talks which will now include discussion of mutual force withdrawal when and if they happen. The campaign was a gutsy gamble for Ukraine, and it still isn't clear if it'll pay off. One thing that is becoming clear, though... All this narrative which Russia uh, tried to sell to the Western audience, that, uh, guys, any um, foreign soldier who one day will come on our soil uh, will be eliminated and... Uh, we are always ready to use nuclear weapons against this foreign soldier and so and so on. This narrative currently is uh, pointless. Putin's response to the Kursk invasion was slow. Initially, he said Russia would not have enough resources in place until October to expel Ukraine from Kursk. Russia is doing very well in eastern Ukraine's Donetsk region, where it's making slow but steady gains, and it does not want to give up on the offensive there. I think what we can say is Russia is trying everything possible to avoid uh, uh, taking uh, the pressure off the Ukrainian front line. That's the reason why uh, they have all sorts of radar troops, conscripts, uh, uh, troops that belong to the Ministry of Inter Interior now in Kursk Oblast. You heard that right. Russia is sending specialists like radar operators into Kursk along with newly drafted conscripts with just a few weeks worth of training. They are not ready to participate in combat operations because their responsibility is protection of uh, their uh, Air Force uh, bases or, I don't know, space launch sites, uh, and so and so on. Uh, so even if they are trained, the, uh, their specialization is not, is not good for the Joint Force uh, combat, uh, combat operations. The best thing the Russian con conscripts can do is to turn themselves in to the Ukrainians immediately. Because conscripts like this, on their training level, faced with battle-hardened Ukrainian grim mechanized forces, uh, uh, they, they will not survive this. As of published time, there are early reports Russia may be moving more mechanized brigades into Kursk, along with more battle-hardened troops. It's a critical time in the campaign, and Ukraine is asking once again for the West to lift the restrictions on using long-range weapons inside Russia. Russian troops will be vulnerable when they are moving around. And I think it's very important now that the Western partners allow Ukraine to use deep strike precision fires 
uh, to hit the Russian troops on the march. That's best for everybody if they never even arrive on the battlefield and you can hit them while they are uh, moving around somewhere. According to Nico Lang and most other experts I speak to on the matter, the only way the West lifts the weapons restrictions is for the White House to stop being, quote, so shy. For Straight Arrow News, I'm Ryan Robertson. If you want more unbiased, straight fact reporting like this, head on over to san.com or download the Straight Arrow News app today.